Okay, so I thought it would take a minute just to show you how to tone your canvas. This is something you'll have to do in advance of actually wanting to paint on it, at least a day or a couple of days anyways. Uh, so what you need is a palette, a palette knife, some color, in this case it's burnt umber, a drying agent, either some cobalt dryer, or a little bit of liquid, either is fine. Some odorless mineral spirits or turpentine, whichever you prefer, a tiny bit of linseed oil, an older brush and some paper towel. So we tone the canvas mainly to get rid of the brightness of it. So that white canvas, when you put your first brush stroke of color on it can be quite stark. So toning it either with a brown, which is the more traditional golden brown, say that the old masters would use or a number three value kind of warm gray that um, someone like Bouguereau would have used and then into the 20th century a lot of the illustrators would have used colored ground so any of those will just cut that brightness down so that you've got some context for your brush strokes of color to sit in and of course it also should also lend itself to um, unifying the painting so what we call the, the field color of the painting or in Italian the word is campitura so this Capitura, um, you know, again, most um, emphasized by the, the old masters, kind of golden brown would oftentimes be the, uh, the color of the shadows. So if you study some of these old paintings, you'll see this, this brown or kind of red brown peeking through the shadows where there's no overpainting. That's just the canvas and then the lights are built up nice and thick. So what you what you can place it on either thicker or thinner. I like to go a bit thinner so that it dries quickly. There's no re need to have a lot of thick layers at the bottom of your painting. Um, yeah, so what do I use? I use this uh, burnt umber. In this case, it's a Michael Harding burnt umber. And you wanna, of course, put up enough so that you are going to be able to cover the canvas you have. Of course, if you need to add more, you can. It's not like you're mixing up a special color, it's just coming right out of the tube. Next, I'll uh, add, start to add a little bit of the uh, oil of spirits. Start to mix it up. So what I'm looking for is a consistency of say about a little bit thinner than house paint. Now, um, one concern is if the paint gets too thin, it can, um, if it's put on a bit thick, can flake off. So sometimes I'll add a, a few drops of, of linseed oil. And then again, one of these dryers just helps speed it up. Liquid or cobalt, cobalt. I like cobalt for the, the bottom layer. Um, it it actually cooks your painting, so you've got to be careful not to use too much of it. Also, over time, if you use too much of it, will leak through the surface, and you get these kind of purpley spots. <clears throat> Liquid turns the paint into an enamel, so probably archivally, it's better. I'm going to put some more burnt umber. So because this burnt umber is going on quite thin, <clears throat> it's going to become warmer. So it's going to look something like that. Again, you can vary the thickness to be a little bit 
say darker and thicker or thinner and lighter. tiny bit more. Like the color would be good. If you're short, it's not like you have to mix up a special color, you just need to squeeze out a bit more from the tube. So, like I said, you want it to be about like thickish house paint. Sorry, a tiny bit thinner than house paint. Which I'm almost there. With something like this, anyhow, it's always better to err on the side of taping a little bit lighter. Of course, it depends on your artistic goal, but... It's always very easy to, to darken the, the cap to it a little bit if you want to keep it established by laying, layering on some more of this color. Transparently, you get, can actually get some quite nice shadow effects. Okay, so that's not bad. Make sure you mix up all the paint. Tiny bit more. This is where art making is a lot like cooking. Okay, so once I've got my color mixed up, what I'm going to do next is just take my old brush and rub this on. Spread it thin. You can see now why we use a radial brush. <clears throat> So this paint is fairly solid, very thick. It can be a little bit thinner. What this is going to give me is a nice solid base. If uh, you want it to be more scrappy and thinner, you can, you can do that. Just make the paint a little bit thinner. Okay. Then I'll take some paper towel. Wipe back. Do 
the right value. It's too dark. But. This is going to be for a Caravaggio painting, so it can be quite dark, but this is still a bit darker than I like. So I shift to Rago and Silver more. So we get this nice golden brown. Capitura. So just as a way of showing you different examples, so here we've got my kind of darker Campitura, and then this is a, a lighter one, still with the burnt umber, just a little bit more thinner in the paint, so that it spreads thinner on the paper. This is just gesso paper, and this was a little Caravaggio head study I did. You can see here that shadow be left as the, uh, the Campitura, but then it wasn't dark enough, so just layering more thin burnt umber on it would uh, darken it. And then this is another one, again, just a very lightly um, stained canvas to cut some of that whiteness so that I can do these uh, flush balls. So again, there's different options um, depending on your goal in the painting.